What if I told you there was an industry that has been around for years, has employed more than 126,000 people in the United States? It puts it on par with oil and gas, car manufacturing, iron and steel mills, coal mining, and logging. It's been proven for decades. It's sitting right under our noses, and we're mostly ignoring it. What is that industry? It's actually ecological restoration. It's a process to regain ecological function and productivity from our damaged ecosystems. And the interesting thing, the starting point is kind of a stark reality, right? It's that we've damaged 40% of our planet, of our life support system. Here you see five of those critical ecosystems alongside the amount that we have damaged or lost to date. But this does not have to be the beaten and barren planet that we gift to the next generations. To fix it, we have to do two things at the same time. We have to slow and stop the damage, and we have to accelerate the pace of our restoration. Together, we can do more than we think. Let's take a closer look on our farms we can actually naturally restore the nutrients in the soil to grow more and healthier food. We can restore our forests for cleaner air, fresher water, better habitat for threatened animal species, and to pull harmful carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and bring it down to earth in the form of carbon storage and life-giving plants and trees and shrubs. We can restore our grasslands for better soil and water conservation and to give habitat for pollinators and other wildlife. We can grow new mangroves to protect us from storms and to, to have vibrant coastal fisheries. And our coral reefs can be replanted, home to more than 4,000 species of fish, 25% of all marine life. And also we can restore this ecotourism paradise. Now this, this is the world we want. And this is the world we can have if we accelerate our action. Now, what types of jobs are we talking about in this restoration economy that we just mentioned? But well, there's something in it for everyone. As you might imagine, if you like working outdoors, you like working with your hands, you like working with the land, there are opportunities for regenerative farmers, for restoration entrepreneurs, and for nursery managers. But there are also opportunities for landscape architects and engineers to help us plan and design the landscapes of the future and to help us see what's not there today but could be there tomorrow. There are jobs for geospatial analysts and drone pilots to help us better monitor our progress there are jobs for genetic biologists and soil scientists to innovate in our labs and make us more efficient in the restoration that we're trying to do. There are jobs for investment analysts, policy advocates, policymakers, and so much more. Indeed, there is something for everyone in the restoration economy. Now, I'm kind of an unlikely person to be on stage talking to you with such enthusiasm about an environmental solution. I grew up in a small paper mill town in northern Maine. And don't get me wrong, we love our outdoors, love our outdoors. But growing up there in the 1980s, when people brought environmental solutions to us, they were usually bad for business. And that was kind of my mindset. But we know times are changing. And today, I have the privilege of leading the work on restoration at the World Resources Institute, where we believe in the power and the promise of a restoration economy, where we can grow our ecology and our economy together at the same time. And we're working with hundreds of like-minded partners who believe in that same big idea. Right now, as we speak, my team and our partners are, are scanning the globe, finding the best local restoration projects out there, community leaders and entrepreneurs that are restoring their land, and working with the governments in the countries they work in to shift the incentives in favor of restoration and away from degradation. And this work has taught me that this environmental solution, restoration, it can be very good for business. And here's the good news, it's been done. Let's look at three examples of how restoration economies have been catalyzed around the world. First, welcome to China's Lus Plateau. Windswept with dust and erosion, local people were incentivized with a $500 million investment from the World Bank and the government to transform their landscape. And in a short span of seven years, the vegetative cover increased, it doubled actually, from 17% to 34%. At the same time, grain output increased by 62%, incomes almost tripled, and two and a half million people were lifted out of poverty. This Dust Bowl was transformed into a green, productive landscape. In Niger, in the 1980s, famine and drought had struck. The government there had a different kind of incentive. They said, if you grow a tree, you actually own the rights to that tree. That wasn't the case previously. And that ownership incentive led millions of farmers to nurture trees on their farms for better soil and water conservation. 
And it spread across five million hectares, an area two and a half times the size of Massachusetts, and pulling two and a half million people out of being food insecure to being food secure. In Costa Rica, forest cover has doubled since 1983, from 26% to 52%. How? The government relaxed a cattle ranching subsidy and took a tax from the oil and gas sector and gave that to individuals, landowners, and said, landowners, if you grow trees on your properties, in your farms, in your nearby forests, we'll pay you for that. It transformed the rural landscape. And it's, it's really solidified Costa Rica's position as a global ecotourism powerhouse. And again, it's proven that you can grow your ecology and your economy at the same time. Now, each of these examples shows us that the combination of local action with the right incentives can lead to large-scale change. But we studied it further. We, we created what we call a restoration diagnostic that can be applied to any landscape that you might love to say, are the right key success factors in place for this area to be able to restore at this level? And we looked at several different factors. We looked at motivating factors. Are people aware of and educated to the benefits of restoration? Are there legal requirements to restore? How does culture fit in to how restoration should unfold in this landscape? We looked at the enabling conditions. Are the right seed supply in place? Are the right rainfall and, and other soil conditions in place for eco ecologically for restoration to take place? Are the right incentives in place for, to favor restoration over degradation? Socially, do communities have the, right, have the ability to actually design their own solutions, design their futures, and benefit from those futures? And do markets exist for the products and services that restoration provide? And lastly, they're implementing factors. Is, is the right local leadership in place? Do they have access to the right indigenous knowledge and the right innovations, the right financing and monitoring to be able to deliver the many benefits that restoration can provide, ranging from a stable climate to better food, cleaner water, better nutrition and human health, more robust habitat for wildlife and stronger economies. Put simply, we can have no health, no wealth, and no stable climate without healthy ecosystems. It's that simple. This is not a charitable act, it's an investment in our planetary foundation. And here's another cool thing, a movement is starting to emerge. I love their shirts. This is from EU Parliament in the summer of 2023. A bitter fight erupted, as the headline says. And in the end, at a vote of 330 votes to 300, a law passed, the EU Restoration Law, that requires each EU member state to create a plan for how to comply with the new legally binding requirement to restore 20% of their nature. This is unprecedented. And in Europe is not alone. A global movement is emerging. We've mapped more than 100 countries around the world that have commitments, plans, strategies to restore their nature. Which leaves us really with one question, how to take this unprecedented amount of interest and commitment and translate it into action and results on the ground. Well, as a direct response, we and our partners are combining forces to help accelerate the restoration economy. We believe that entrepreneurs and community leaders are at the center of this solution. This is a local solution. But those local solutions need support. So we are scouting, screening, supporting, and scaling as many local solutions as we can find. And there are many out there. And, and why, why an accelerator model, right? Well, we love what Y Combinator and Techstars have done for us as society. They've changed the way we eat, the way we vacation, the way we learn. And we share their vision that when entrepreneurs are supported, we will have a better world. We share their passion for, net, for creating networks, for, for making sure that we're connecting entrepreneurs with each other. And the centrality of entrepreneurs having access to resources, intensive skill building, and mentorship. Now, this is true for tech-based startups, but it's equally true for nature-based startups. But our nature-based startups have woefully less support. Let's change that. Let's work together to make sure that these restoration pioneers have the support that they need to grow their models. And frankly, let's help them help us. Now, you might be wondering, what does one of these businesses look like? So come with me on a very brief trip to Bahia in Brazil to learn about one amazing restoration business. Meet Bruno Mariani. Bruno is the founder and CEO of Symbiosis Investimentos. It's a Brazilian company that works to restore native forests. Bruno and his team are collecting nearly extinct native species. They're collecting seeds from those native species, and they're bringing them back to their farms to germinate them and to naturally breed them. Their business model is native timber sales. 60% of their farm is dedicated to those native timber sales, but 40% is dedicated to native tree conservation. Their profit margin is approaching 20%. Bruno's closing on a $20 million investment as we speak. 
And with the Brazilian government passing a forest code that requires landowners to plant more native species on their farms, Bruno's model is poised for massive scale. Bruno and his team are restoring culture, they're restoring native genetic material, they're restoring economic activity, and they're restoring hope. And they're not alone. We're literally working with thousands of entrepreneurs and community leaders like Bruno. Let me give you an example from Africa. More than 5,000 people have raised their hands to say, we want acceleration and we want support. To date, we've been able to work with 300 of these companies in our accelerator model, and we've been able to invest directly in 200 of these projects. Almost $48 million with support from the Bezos Earth Fund, from MasterCard, and from others. They're growing about 48 million trees and have created jobs for more than 26,000 African people, mostly in rural areas. This is a great start, but it's still less than 10% of those that have raised their hands already to say we want to do this. And we know that with the right support for these hyper-local activities, these entrepreneurs and community leaders will inspire others to follow. This is the world we want. It's beautiful. It's functional. It delivers value. Ecological restoration allows us to be good ancestors and good neighbors. It's also proven to be good business and worthy of our investment. These entrepreneurs and policymakers around the world have opened the door of partnership to each of us. We invite you to join the restoration economy. We invite you to learn more, to explore the jobs in the restoration economy, to explore the business models that we're seeing in these restoration solutions, to join our community online, to educate others, to apply the restoration diagnostic in a landscape that you love and care about, to advocate for better policies and incentives, to mentor and to invest. Together we can do more than we think we can. Let's gift our children a healthy planet that we can be proud of. And let's have our generation be known as the restoration generation. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.